Okay, you guys. So this is going to be an interesting topic. Hopefully it's not awkward or uncomfortable for you. I'm just going to come out and say it. We are going to be talking about the IUD, which is called the intrauterine device. Yes, that's right. So this is a form of birth control. If that makes you feel weird at all, please don't watch. If you're not mature enough, if you're not old enough, just be aware that this is the topic at hand. So we're just going to get right on into it and I'm just going to go for it. So what is the IUD? It is, and I quote, this is a Google definition by the way, a small plastic T-shaped device used for birth control. It is inserted into the uterus where it stays to prevent pregnancy. Not only that, but a lot of people, myself included, will also use this specifically for mood and periods, like if they have periods too heavy and problematic, if they have moods that are all over the place, up and down like a roller coaster. I've experienced both of those hard periods as well as very challenging, hard to endure emotions and mood swings. It's terrible, awful, especially as a person with bipolar, the IUD greatly helps in that regard. So I do have notes and I will refer to them at times so my experience a review the IUD that's what I'm gonna be doing right here right now so why did I get it so like I said basically periods and mood um, the intent to get it but it just so happens that it works in my relationship and avoiding pre pregnancy as well um, yeah so my periods about 10 days a week long with that and being bipolar it was very hard to have periods so that is why I got it I have bipolar disorder. I was diagnosed shortly after I went psychotic several years ago now and that went into that hard time in my life, the bipolar disorder that I wasn't exactly aware of and then it was like the year before that that I got the IUD. So if I didn't have the IUD in 2016 and then I go psychotic the year after that. If I didn't have that, it would have been probably 10 times worse because my mood, just as I got older and as I progressed my high school years and post high school graduation, it just got to the point where it was really, really hard, really, really bad. So the mood swings, the period problems, the period pain, 10 days and mood all over the place, so it greatly helped with that. Obviously, it helps to prevent pregnancy. And now note number two, and there's like nine points, I guess. So that was why I got it in my history. So this is the first form of birth control I've ever had. Obviously, I've had other forms of protection. I'll, I'll get more into that, but condoms. So obviously, birth control can help with just how it sounds, birth control. So it's avoiding pregnancy. So that is another perk to having it, to having the IUD. Not only does it help with mood and periods, but it also helps obviously to prevent pregnancy. So let's continue on. So point number three, the experience itself. So yes, there is pain when inserted and a little bit after. So um, I got it in 2016, it was spring of 2016, and my type, I had it for just under five years, and when I went in to get it um, replaced, so taken out and put a new one in, they said, hopefully next time you do it closer to the five years timeline, time frame, it's just, it's better for you, and it's just a smart thing to do but I just felt like things were starting to wear off and my mood was starting to build up and I could just feel it. I could feel those old feelings and just feel the vibe of how I used to feel before the IUD. It just rushed back to me and I was like, I can't have this repeat itself. That's just going to be too hard. So it will technically expire with your issues as to why you got it. <clears throat> if that makes sense. So like periods and mood, I could tell that my mood was changing. So hence, that's why I got it replaced because it seemed like it was starting to wear off. So it was seemingly about to expire. So 
Um, the pain, see, I have a high pain tolerance, and when I got it inserted the first time and when I got it replaced, so the, the one I have right now, I was told I was brave and I have a high pain tolerance. So it does feel like cramps and there's a slight pinching sensation, I suppose. So it is a little bit uncomfortable and you're going to feel a little awkward. It's very invasive because this is your body and your privates. It is your vagina being touched and you're having something that you're not used to put inside of you. So it is a little awkward that way, especially if you're like me where you have social anxiety and you're kind of sort of shy at times, especially with your body. Like it's still hard for me to be intimate with my boy, with my man. So it's just, it's something like that. You feel a pinch, you feel some cramps. It will last about two minutes, I would say, just the whole process, the procedure, at least for me anyway. If you move, if you shift, it's obviously going to take a little bit more time. They'll have to reposition and adjust and everything. So that's all I would say. It's cramps. It's pinching. If you consider those feelings painful, especially down there, if you can imagine how that's going to feel, you might feel the pain. You might consider it painful. It's just I personally didn't really find it painful. It's more discomfort. That is my real concern. And I just feel anxiety whenever I go into the doctor's office. So I feel that, but it's more the social anxiety, not so much the fear of the physical actual pain that I will experience, if that makes sense. And my two sisters, I'm one of five kids. There's three girls in my family, so I'm the baby girl. So my two sisters got it. One of my sisters got it. Before I did, one of my sisters got it after I did. So I got feedback and like tips and tricks from my older sister. Well, one of the older sisters, the one who got it first. And then I gave like those same like tips and tricks and whatever, all that to my other sister. And she got it after. Well, it just so happened like that. That was the timeline, the time frame. Like so and so got it first, and then I was next, and then, you know. So, anyway, um, let's move on to one, two, three, four, right, and I got it taken out in September, so fall. So basically half a year early then, does that make sense? Like, over six months probably, yeah, so about six months timeline, I got it inserted, sorry, um, I'm confusing you now. Um, I got it about half a year taken out and replaced early. I'm just going to move on because that probably doesn't, doesn't make sense. Okay, so that was the experience itself. And periods, do I still have periods? Yes, but they're rare. So when I first got the IUD, it was legit every day for like three months. So that was basically the exact... Um, estimate like the three month mark and then it stopped for me. I went through so many pads, tampons. I don't like tampons. I've tried and failed at inserting a tampon. This was years ago when my period was pretty new to me and everything. But I'm comfortable with a penis. That's like natural. I'm comfortable with the IUD. Obviously, I had it now twice and I have it right now. But tampons is something that, that just freaks me out. So I'm going to throw that out there. So if you're used to tampons and you've ever experienced a pinch or a cramp because of that, um, this won't be too different from that. But I can't really say because I've never correctly and actually worn a tampon. I would just remember the feeling of discomfort so you can kind of relate the two. But anyway, um, where was I? So... Yes, the periods are rare, and it was like every day for three months, and it was heavy. It was a heavy flow. It was a lot of blood, and it was like my 10-day average period, except for it carried on for a three-month span, so not very fun. That's just common for the first-time insertion of the IUD, so that's to be expected. There's really no concerns there. It's your body trying to readjust its hormonal changes, its period changes. Sometimes your period will stop cold turkey. That happened to one of my sisters. 
she just thank her lucky stars like she has it good you know me it's very rare like now it's probably like twice a year or so i would say before that it was like every other month around about still the 10 days i would say still pretty heavy each of those days it's just it's spaced out and now you know it's been a few months since i had it i got it in september replaced and after that there was a little bit of bleeding like an average period i would have and then i haven't had it ever since september so now here we are mid january of the following year after that september so just like that you can see well you can't see that's really weird and awkward to say but you can tell obviously that it's not going to be as often probably not so um let's see yeah so about like two to three times a year got it in the spring of 2016 so that's just been my experience so far 16 17 18 19 20 yeah, so I've had this guy for quite some time. Now, sex. S-E-X. -S. Um, yes, my significant other, he does sometimes feel it during when we're intimate. Um, not all the time, but can. He'll sometimes comment on it, like, does that hurt? I'll ask him if it hurts him. Um, pain during it. I have experienced pain, not because of the IUD, but I've always experienced a little bit of pain when I'm being intimate, and this is really hard to talk about. Well, not really. I mean, I'm pretty open about things, but I hope I'm not blushing, and I hope I make sense. But it actually has improved since I've got the IUD, which is very strange. It's kind of bizarre, but the pain during sex, um, I haven't really had that as intense or annoying like before. So I've just, I've always experienced that, but it seems it just so happens with the IED, it's not like it was. So kind of interesting. So be aware of two things. So birth control, pregnancy, well, those two things, as well as preventing STDs. So birth control, it's not perfect. It's not. There are cases where there's pregnancy risks and pregnancy can still happen. Um, while it is pretty effective and usually prevents pregnancy, it isn't perfect, like as I said, there are always exceptions. So with that, the IUD, it's basically like everything else where it's like, oh, it's 99.9% .9 success rate. But I've heard of people and I know of people, I have friends who have friends who have gotten pregnant on the IUD. So it's not perfect and there is that chance, there is a risk of that. If you see it as a risk, it's a risk. Risk. So there's that, just something to take into account. If that happens, if that's you, if it's anyone, they strongly recommend, strongly suggest, highly recommend that you get the IUD taken out as soon as possible. Most likely the IUD out or remaining in, you will probably have a miscarriage just because the body it's not prepared to hold a child to grow a child. The IUD has changed how your body, your just everything, it changes. So like the hormones and everything. So it's something to take into account. You usually want to remove, but you can successfully grow and have and birth a child after the IUD has been taken out, after you've gotten pregnant on the IUD. So just something kind of interesting, something kind of scary too. So also be aware it does not fight against or prevent STDs. So a condom, it can avoid STDs. Again, it's not perfect. Some might say it's 99.9% .9 successful, whatever. But the IUD can prevent pregnancy, not so much STDs. So some people will just think, oh, hey, it's a form of birth control, so therefore I don't have to worry about extra or other forms of protection. But that's not true. So it's something to talk about with you and your partner. It's something to be aware with, aware of. So just know that it's not going to replace what you would use to prevent STDs, which is sexual transmitted diseases. So that's something to note. And then just a few more things, so a little bit about it. So there are several different types, currently five approved here in the US, if you are in the US. 
So mine is the, I think it's Monera, Marina, sorry, Marina is I think how you pronounce it, and it's the hormonal type. So those two things. So Marina is like the brand, Marina, whatever, and hormonal is what that is. And then, um, anyway, so I'll just explain. So hormonal, which I really need for my bipolar symptoms, right? And there are different sizes also depending on your size down there, so the size of your vagina. So because mine's kind of longer, they did the five years and they did the marina. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it just, it depends on your size and also how long you want it. If you want to get pregnant, if you only want it for a few years, you know. So like with me, I don't want to have kids anytime soon. So I might as well be on the five year as well. And it just so happens that it works and it's, it's going to work with my size as well. And also to end this, would I recommend heck to the app? I really haven't had any problems. It hasn't fallen out. It hasn't given me excess pain or really pain at all. You know, I don't feel it anymore. When I got it, I'm um, not redone. That sounds weird. But when I got it taken out and replaced back in September a few months ago, I did feel discomfort. I did feel uncomfortable for a time for those few days after the procedure, after I got the new one inserted. And it was a little bit surprising to me. I didn't remember that from last time. Last time it was like peachy fine and dandy in regards to pain. I didn't experience pain or just any weird feeling down there. But I did feel a pinch. I felt sore, you know. So I did feel that for a few days after I got it um, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? replaced. Sorry. So yeah, anyway. That is my experience, and I don't know, just things and stuff regarding the IUD. So if this helps, hopefully it did, you know? It was just something that I wanted to throw out there and offer, and I think it's important to talk about these things. I don't want things like this to be taboo, but sadly in our culture and in society, these types of things just tend to be that way. But we can kind of break the stigma with, I don't know, just things like birth control and preventing pregnancy, things like that. It doesn't have to be taboo. Taboo, still can't talk, and 23 years old. But taboo or uncomfortable, it's just, it's our body, and we should be proud of it. We should protect it. We should honor it. And now this is turning into like some kind of random weird speech but anyway i'm going to get going so um yeah okay um <laughs>